Hi, I'm Patricia Allingham Carlson, and I hope you'll enjoy my video and get some interesting ideas out of it. Now let's paint. This is my painting of Eight Arch Bridge, which is in Warwick, Pennsylvania. I'm going to be showing you how I did it. I've been fascinated recently by the historical old buildings in my direct area. I've been painting some right in my town, and I had a local person contact me and say I should paint the Eight Arch Bridge in Warwick because it's so interesting. It's the longest stone arch bridge in Pennsylvania and the only one with eight arches. It was built in 1804. So it's been around a long time. I found it interesting and fun to paint this bridge that goes over the Neshaminy Creek. I began this painting with a fairly strong drawing. I painted some masking fluid in to block out some areas so I could keep the drawing strong. When I'm doing something very architectural and man-made structure-ish, I feel like I need to preserve those angles made by man. And one of the nice things about an arch bridge is that the arch is a natural curvy form as opposed to all straight and angular. I'm blocking in the sunlit parts of trees and I'm blocking in sunlit parts of the bridge itself. In case you can't tell, I'm using the end of the brush, not the hair part, because masking fluid has been fighting me very badly recently, trying to get it out of the hair part. It seems to be just destroying my brushes, and I think I need to get some new masking fluid. When it's completely dry, I begin the background of the painting. I spray it in with some water and then I start to touch in the colors. The reason for the water spray is that the droplets allow whites between and if I don't want to have a solid colored background I can make it sort of speckled looking or sort of dappled looking. To me that implies foliage sunlight, sparkling color, and whites mixed in with the colors. And that's sort of how light conveys itself to me in a landscape quite frequently. So this is my attempt to capture light. The blues are where the sky is showing, and this is a fall or an autumn scene, so I'm putting in my golden colors first. And then the darker, brighter colors of autumn will go on second. There was still a lot of green showing in this painting from my photograph reference. So I'm using that and touching it in, in many places, right on top of the yellow, where it makes a nice lime green, a very lively color. some yellow ochre next, and I'm just dabbing it in, trying to make it look spotty and not solid, like leaves would look. The masking fluid is allowing some of the whites of the trees to, to stay preserved. Some burnt sienna goes in next. And some browns. In many cases, I work from lighter color and lighter hues to darker colors. 
I've touched in a little bit of purple and a little bit of rose matter as well. Because looking at the photograph reference, I did see some of these colors. And I do exaggerate the colors that I do see, just because it's what I like to do. You could see me using my hand as a block. And when I splatter paint, I do use my hand as a shield to keep the paint from going where I don't want it to go. After I've begun the background, I then start working inside of each of the arches. Because the background is showing through these arches. And it shows right down to where the water starts. Again, I'm using a dappled, dabby, speckly type of approach. Not solid, because I want the light to dance through the color. This bridge is not actually even being used anymore because it has become decrepit and there are not adequate funds to restore it. At this time you can walk across the bridge but you cannot drive a car and you could not even drive a horse and buggy if you wanted to. It's blocked to traffic. A functional utilitarian bridge has been built close by and that is what car traffic uses to go up the road. There are some islands that have formed out of rock and gravel and that's what you see in front of the one arch that I'm painting in, Burt Sienna. And then I begin to water, showing the directionality of the flow as it goes through the bridge and then comes toward the viewer in the, in the woods. And I, my view is actually looking through the woods at the stream and the bridge. And this is from the path of a beautiful park that goes through there where my husband and I love to hike. There's a lot going on in the water. There is the directionality of the flow, and there are reflections from the bridge and from the trees in the background. I'm painting it section by section, trying to keep a loose hand because water just flows and changes and the colors just change through, the reflections change through. And I don't want it to look stiff, but I want it to look flowing. But I am using the colors and the light that I see in my photographic reference as a direction to, to follow. I'm marking out where the trees come up from the shore and the bank in front of the bridge because I have to remember to paint around them when I'm painting the bridge. And then there are two trees on the right that come up in front of the picture. 
but I'm now beginning to paint the bridge itself, which is made out of stone. It's a very, very attractive bridge. It's sort of a blue stone. We call it blue stone, but it's actually more of a gray. Mixed in our browns and, and rust colors as well. And very pale gray colors. But I'm sure it's a local stone. You can see that I varied the color or the intensity of, of the darks and lights. I don't want it to be all one color because that would not be natural or interesting looking. And then the bridge itself reflects into the water. There's a lot of layers of color going into this water, but I'm really trying to paint what I see. On the bank, there were so many fallen leaves that that was a quite speckled and textured type of area to approach. And then there are trees and branches in front of the bridge as well. And of course they are hardly textured. The water is primarily horizontal in, in the direction it goes with a slight diagonal where the current goes along the shoreline. But here and there trees are reflected in a vertical manner. I am coming into the water and laying in a second glazing layer to enhance the darks and the intensity of some of the colors. I'm also going through the water at a horizontal and finding the gravel deposits that are built up through the water. I don't want to get too picky and too detailed with them, but they are there and they're an accurate part of the current and the depth of the water. So I'm trying to show them with as darker bars. I'm also trying to show the beautiful colors in the far background reflecting into the water. And it looks a little choppy right now. It's going to take some more work. The arch is considerably darker where it's reflected into the water and that has been built up several times. And now I'm detailing the bridge. Each arch has a keystone and a series of stones that go around the particular curve. It has the depth going back into the curve through which the water flows. And off to the right, it becomes quite dark where it's in shadow.
and I'm returning to the background to do a bit more detailing on how the trees structure the colors that you see back there. I'm adding some branches that are a very strong part of the painting and give a little structure to the back there as well. Some tree trunks. And working further on the orchards. In the foreground, on the left side, the bank is quite dark. And all the right sides of the trees are quite dark in shadow, whereas the right sides are lit up in sunlight. So I'm beginning to find the structure on the left as I work around the structures of the bridge and the trees in the background. Trying to make sure my lines are as straight as I can get them for the actual bridge itself because it's not ready to collapse yet. Darkening some more and taking off where I made it too dark. Finding the balance that looks right to me. Finding some rows of rock, or stone that make up the actual bridge and suggesting the individual stones without spelling them all out. Lines, spots, dots, speckles within the structure of how the stonework would have been laid by the stonemasons who built the bridge. And I'm coming back into the water to enhance another layer of color as well as to break up some of the stripes of color that go across. I'm softening them and blending them more, as you can see, with a damp brush without adding more color. So it will look softer and less stripey. And then I'm waving in some tree trunks that are reflected from the background. In my photograph, the area I'm painting right now is not even very clear. So I'm taking my best guess as to the structure of the bridge that at that point and as to what is showing through. Because the trees will obscure a good part of that view anyway. And sometimes all you could do is guess. I've just removed the masking that was in the arch area of the bridge. And you can see it's perfectly white. But I found my drawing was off, so now I'm restructuring it with my brush and my paints. And trying to correct where my drawing was not quite correct. You could do a lot of lifting with watercolor with just a damp brush with water and a paper towel. Paint on what you don't like. Gently blot it off. And if you repeat the action several times, you can get a good bit of the paint off. 
A mistake doesn't have to be hopelessly wrecking your whole painting. You could fix it quite frequently. And I make a lot of mistakes just like everybody else does. I'm dappling in the leaves that are built up on the bank. The bank is made up of several different sections that overlap each other. And between the sections, there's shadows and, and hollows and dark areas. So I decided to first start with the dappled textured of the leaves. And then I'm painting shadows on top and trying to keep them sort of dappled as well. My shadow colors are getting joined by mauve, and mauve is being a mixture of a purple and an orange or a brown. In this case, I'm using Indian red mixed with a purple called Purple Lake. I'm also using yellow ochre for the gold colored parts where the sunshine is shining strongly on the leaves. Refining the water a bit more and then coming in and painting some strong darks on the bank where the shadows are. And this provides a nice contrast in the foreground. And I think it adds to the composition as well. I'm removing the masking from the two foreground trees that come in front of the whole painting as well. As well as this fallen tree that points nicely toward the left bank. Adding branches to the background, some refinement to the water, and then I will begin more earnestly on the foreground. I've begun my foreground trees by first painting in the dark side and indicating my darkness on that shadowed side, and then by adding a layer of texture This is a tree with a rough bark, and I want to show that bark in my painting. So if I paint a heavy, darker texture underlying the other colors, and if I allow it to dry and paint over top of it, that barky texture will show through. Now these trees are a mixture of grays and browns, so those are the colors that I'm using to show them. I'm painting carefully around the fallen tree on the left side. So its edge will be more clearly defined. This is a foreground tree and it can't really be as blurry as things that go off into the distance. It has to be sharper in its definition. And you can see that I'm curving textural lines up and away and then back down on the sides. 
to indicate how the tree is formed and how it's lying and its orientation to the plane of the paper and the view. So those curvy lines that indicate the directionality are going like frown lines going like moons pointed downward on each side. The bank is quite dark on the far right side of the left bank, but I did not want it to be black. So I'm using a mixture of deep purples burnt siennas, and indigo to get a good dark color without making it look like a dull or drab color like black would be. Painting branches that come in front of the bridge. And you could see that is the way to do it, is to paint the bridge first and the background and then paint the things that go on top of it in the foreground, as opposed to trying to paint around something that you've already painted, which is really not as much fun. The trees on the left side are of several different species or specimens, so I'm approaching them in different ways, with different colors, different textures, different bark, that keeps it interesting. Then there's some clumps of leaves and you can see them as white areas right now. The fallen tree I'm shading on the right side allowing the sunlight where it does hit to stay much lighter and curving shadows and shades around the bark and the trunk. So each of those trees on the left is shaded on the right side and sunlit on the left side. Laying out the structure and then I will paint in the colors of the trunks. And there's a branch going clear across the top. I have tried to keep some strong lights in that, as it was in my photographic reference. And I like it how the sun seems to be lighting it up. We have the same kind of thing going on on the trees on the right. I'm taking down some of the strong whites, but I will leave some. And you can see the barky texture coming through the colors that I'm putting on top. Now, if I were to paint over it several more times, especially if it was damp, the underlying bark would mostly disappear. So I'm trying to carefully preserve the glazing and the layer I left underneath. On the left side, I have gray trees. I have brownish trees. I have different colored trees. Uh, I then have the clumps of leaves coming in front and blocking off where you see the trunks. And to paint them in, I'm starting with the strongest lights again. I could certainly add darks on top. It's much harder to put lights back or to even get them clean. And now I'm at the point of adjustment and refinement. I'm getting back from the work and looking at it 
from a distance, seeing what needs to be done. I've enhanced the gravel bars by making some darker along the bottom. I've broken up some of the tree and leaf clumps and I've added some shading to some of them. I'm darkening my foreground trees on the right where they need it. and adding some details to that big branch that comes across the top of the front. Some thinner branch work. So these are in the photograph reference. I do not include every branch I see. I include the ones that I think will look good. And if something is not there that I think should be there, I'm going to add that in my picture, even if it isn't there in the photo. These small details and small parts will determine the general feeling of the painting at the end. And then it becomes a matter of how much detail I do want. But I do try to look at the actual structure of the trees and branches. Branches do unexpected things and interesting things. I'm trying also to look at what is overlapping what and what I want to be overlapping what. How many layers I've added to that front branch. But watercolor gets lighter as it dries, as you know. And that's what I need to keep doing. As I painted this one, it seemed to take a long time. There was a lot of detail and a lot of layers. But it's starting to come together and I'm satisfied. I do cover-ups to see what needs a little more work or refinement. Top and bottom, side to side. Adding a little more directionality through the arch and working on the tree, the little tree that comes in front of the arched bridge from the island of dirt that has built up there. Shadows coming down from trees on the far left that we don't even see, but they're certainly implied in the forest. And so they're lying on the slope. And they are going downhill with the slope. The gravel bar gets one more layer of textural color. The downed tree in the front is getting a few more branches. And I'm clarifying around the base of the trees on the left, as well as darkening the shadow. This has been a challenging painting. 
really enjoyed doing it. I've gotten a couple branches from outside or sticks to see if I should add just a little more interest on the right side. And I decided that would be a good idea. I'm using a good burnt sienna color, which I'll then shade. Finding a pen that will work, and it's signed. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. There's also links below to the products I use, my Facebook art page, my blog, and my product store. Your comments are welcome too. See you next painting.